So these were all examples of interest, okay? We did three different kinds last week. We did simple interest, which was just the line, right? Which is not these guys. We did compounded interest, <clears throat> which it was like it happened more than once a year. So like quarterly, monthly, something like that. And then there was continuously, okay? Continuously had the number E, right? And that's really as far as we got with E. I said, I said, hey, E is a number. E is a number. Let's just go with it. And you said, okay. And we did, all right? We're going to get more detail today. We're going to figure out what is E, okay? What exactly is it? So we know how to use it. We know the button on the calculator, but what is the number E? Because if I said what's pi, what, what do you tell me? You can at least say 3.14, right? But if I say what's E, you're like, oh, right? We didn't get there. So today we're going to get there. Um, <clears throat> so let's see what E does, okay? So here we have a spot of mold. Oh, backtrack. E, remember the button we pushed was LN on the calculators? That stands for natural log, which we haven't done yet. But the reason why E and natural log are attached to each other is because they both occur naturally, like in the real world, okay? So E is a very real natural number that naturally occurs over time in lots of real world situations. This is one of them. It's about mold, okay, and how fast mold grows. Yep. So a spot of mold is found on, on the wall. Its area is about 10 square centimeters. What's, what's being shown here is a table, a graph, and a function that represents the exact same thing about the mold growth. Okay? So 10 times e to the power of t. Okay? I want you and partner to look at those three pieces and write down some noticings and some wonderings. Okay? I just want you to write, write some stuff down. What do you notice and what are you curious? What do you wonder about? All right, talk to each other. Ready, set, go. All right, lovelies, what did we notice? I heard something. What did you notice? You said it. They all start with 10. Yep. Yep. Everything is starting at 10. Well, we noticed it. We noticed they started at 10. What did you say? All right, they are all increasing exponentially. Anything else? What's that, Robert? What? Yes, we've already established that. They, they told us that they were all the same. Because we're looking at the... Yes, they are all they are all representing the same function. What else? Huh? It's positive. Yep, so it shows that it's growing. No, you're good. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. All right, what about wanderings? What's E? <laughs> <clears throat> so what is E? That might be a wandering you're going on. Huh? Scientists for a long time. <clears throat> Any other wanderings about our graphs? Huh? The trend? <laughs> so what's the trend or like growth factor? So, like, we know what's growing, but, like, how much? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. These are all things to look for. Okay. Before I answer your questions, we're going to do some exploring. Woohoo! Okay. We're going to explore the number. So, there's some things we got to point out first. Okay. The compound interest formula, which we've already been using, is P times 1 plus R over N raised to the NT, okay? A was your final amount, P was your starting value, R was our rate, N was the number of times per year, and T was how many years, okay? We can use this to explore the special case of investing $1 at a rate of 100% for one year. So when I apply all those into our equation, our final amount equals a starting value of 1 
times 1 plus 1 over n raised to n times 1. Okay. <clears throat> okay. What does the n represent in this expression? Especially if, what if this just went away and it was just written like that? It's, uh-huh. All, uh, it has to do with it. So I've kind of taken time away, which is weird. So you're not sure what the unit of time is. So it's the number of compounds in a unit of time. Okay. What's up? What's up? We would, which means I wouldn't have to, which means my exponent is now just n. Right? So what we're doing is we're saying for any unit of time. When n is a very small number, okay, does that mean the fraction is going to be bigger or smaller than n itself? Let's think of something. Think of a small number. Give me a small number. Go smaller. Sounds great. Okay. Is it? Let's see. What is 1 divided by 0 0.03? What is it? It's going to be more than 1. Is it? I think it is. What is one divided by point zero three? Three hundred thirty three. Yes. Is thirty three bigger than point zero three? Yes. So it's going to be bigger. Because you're essentially taking a frat, you're dividing a fraction into a fraction. Keep change flip. You end up multiplying and it gets bigger. Okay. What about um, if it's a very large number? Like let's do 500. 500? That sounds good. Let's compare 500. What's 1 divided by 500? What is it? What is it? All right. 0 0.002. Is that, what is that to 500? It's definitely smaller. It is less than. Okay. These are all things to keep in mind because now what we're about to do is we're about to discover. Some of you want to know the trend or the pattern. Here it comes. <laughs> Remember how my pen wasn't working? That's why. So I had to put it up there. All right. We are going to divide and conquer. Okay. So we're not going to have to all do all of them. We're going to spread the love. There we go. This is one, two, three. So we're going to fill in this table together, and then we're going to answer some questions. All right. All right, so you're going to tell me what you set up and what your results was. If two groups had the same number, one group will set it up. The other group will give me the answer. Okay? So my, my, my number ones, where are you? I know you're number one. Who else is number one? Yes? All right, how did y'all set it up? Awesome. My other group, what was your answer? One? Nope. What is the answer? They set it up. You didn't need the answer. All right. So we're going to round since my directions say to point to six decimal places. We're going to go to six, nine, three, three. Yes. All right. Group two. Right. You guys and who else? Who was two? Y'all two? Okay. How'd you set it up? Uh -huh. Good. 
All right, my other group. What was the answer? There you go. Seven, two, three, two. All right. Good. Uh, group three, right over here, and y'all set it up for me. Thank you. Answer. Good. All right, group four, right here, right in front of me, right? Y'all, y'all, okay? How'd you set it up? All right, Grayson, what'd you get? Two. Good. All right. I think five and beyond John drone. So what do you tell me how to set it up? What do you tell me the answer? Okay. Oh, Hold on. One. Okay. Okay. Three, seven, four, two. Okay. Good. Group uh, six. All right. What does that, that give you? 2.704813. Okay. Good. Group seven. Okay. Yep. All right. Group eight. Okay. Good. Group nine. A hundred thousand this time. Good. Okay. And our answer. All right, and my last group. There you go. Good. All right, good. Our table is filled in. All right, what do we notice? <coughs> As our ends get smaller, so as we go towards 10, 1, 0 0.10, 0 0.01, what's happening to our values? Yes, sir. No. You don't know what E is. You don't know what E is. What is happening when my end, when my the value we're plugging in, is it small? What's happening to my A values? It gets smaller. The value gets smaller. <laughs> the value gets smaller. Okay, what happens as my ends get bigger? As we get towards the one million, they get larger. Okay, what number are we approaching? They're getting real close to something. What is that very last number? 2.71828, right? That's last one we have. <clears throat> so we're growing, but even though we go from 0 0.001 to 1 million, there's not really much of a change, right, of our output. <clears throat> Towards the end, we have like 2.7. 
Then the one comes in that stays the same. Then the eight is still there. Then the two is still there, right? This decimal is forming. So what do you think we're approaching? E. This is approaching, bless you. This is approaching the number E, okay? So this is the formula we that naturally occurs to create the number E, okay? As the number of compoundings increase, the exponential function approaches the irrational number E. The number E is an important constant in mathematics. It's used by scientists, engineers, economists, uh, and others. It is also called Euler's number, <clears throat> and it's named after the 18th century mathematician, Leonard Euler. Okay, so he's the one that discovered this. Okay. Compare and contrast of how is E like pi? They go forever, right? But they're both irrational. Okay, they're irrational. Uh, they continue forever. Uh, decimals never repeat. <clears throat> Can they be represent, represented as a single fraction? No, we got a whole formula to go with it, right? Same thing with pi. How are they different, though? They're actually different numbers. If I said, what's pi, what are you going to tell me? You're going to say 3.14, right? Okay. There's a sign for E. It's just a letter E. E is approximately 2.718, right? And we said E occurs naturally. Where does, where does pi come from? Circles. All right. <clears throat> All right, so the last little bit today, just so we can remember how to type in E. We did it last week, okay? We're going to add some negatives in there, see how you know how to type this in. So you're going to evaluate E to the negative 2.7 power. You're going to evaluate negative E to the power of 5, 5 over 2. And you're going to circle which one in E, uh, number 8, excuse me, which one of those is true. All right. All right, set, go. All right, lovelies, this is what we have on the board. Number 6 and 7, we want you to practice with negative with your E, whether it's in the parentheses, uh, with your base, with your exponent. Okay. Number 8, we wanted to see... Uh, do the laws of exponents still apply? Okay, with our base being an E, does it matter? Does it change the law of exponents? It did not change the law of exponents, okay? Negatives matter. A negative power is not the same thing as a negative base, okay? So that's why A was out, okay? Part B, 2.5 as an exponent is not the fraction 2 over 5, okay? It's actually what? I think it's 5 over 2, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So 2.5 is not the same thing as 2 divided by 5. That is not true. Okay. C. Both pieces of my fraction had negative exponents. Remember, negatives mean they're in the wrong place. You all listening? So that should be e to the 6th over e to the 4th. 6 minus 4. There's my e squared. So that's why this one works. Okay. And my last one, when it flips, guess what? That negative should go away, but it didn't. So that's why D is out. It was almost D, but since the negative was still there, it is not true. Okay, so C is the only true thing. Yeah? Okay, so today was just focusing on just the number E. Because I know we already used it, but you didn't know what you were using. So now you have a better understanding over what E is. So get that worksheet done. There's not a whole lot to it. We'll check it tomorrow, and then we'll move on to compound interest.